So, hello everyone. So today, uh, we will give a talk about the OpenStack cluster zero downtime upgrade and featuring in the Collab project. So um, my name is Hill, and uh, uh, my colleague here is. My name is my name is Dương. I am a software engineer from Fujitsu, Vietnam, and I am also a co-reviewer of Collab. Yeah. So you can ping us in a. Uh, we are our contacts, so in the screen here, we are email on an IRC. So this talk will give some reviews and thoughts about the zero out time upgrade for open stack service. And please note that this is just an idea. Uh, this idea showing in, in this presentation is just a concept and hope that in the future we can implement on our idea in a native open stack project. And we have some POC and demonstration uh, via Cola project. And here an outline. Uh, firstly, we come through the, uh, some concept about the open stack upgrading. And the second thing is our approach from to achieve the minimal, from minimal downtime to zero downtime. And the last thing is some zero downtime upgrade proposal in the Cola environment. We have some demo, and uh, we install some live demo in uh, while upgrading uh, in Cola project, and we. We have a zero down time by comparing with the normal upgrading process, uh, and we have it in our, our video demo. And so this is a live demo, so uh, hope that is okay. Uh, the first thing here is about OpenStack upgrading. So this is one of the most demand feature for every system, and nowadays the service license agreement is more strict, strictly. So. Uh, after each release, we need to decrease the downtime of the system. Uh, we can achieve the upgrading via the co upgrade, but this, can, uh, this is very hard to control the downtime, and uh, the co upgrade uh, is, is very easy, but uh, we can con cannot control the downtime. So uh, here come the two upgrading model. The first thing, the first one here is the blue green deployment and canary release. And the second one here is the rolling upgrade, which are uh, implemented in some open stack projects. <coughs> so in the screen here, we have uh, two cluster. The first one is a cluster running the old versions of our service, which are depicted by uh, green color. And the second cluster here is blue color, that running the new versions. So blue green deployment just switch on the request from the user from old cluster to the new cluster. So the disadvantage here is, is uh, the, it called a high cost of hardware requirement for switching and preparing the infrastructure to upgrading. So uh, the canary release is some um, advantage model of the blue or green deployment. So we just need to switch a percent, a few percent of user requests from the old, uh, old cluster to the new cluster here. And if our new versions of uh, service work well, can work well, so we we switch on 100% uh, of user requests from the old one to the new one here. So here comes the rolling upgrade. Uh, rolling upgrade model in OpenStack it can try to eliminate the need to restart the old service on new cost simultaneously. So we have three services A, B, and C all running in the X version, and while upgrading from the A service and the B service from X to X plus one, uh, we need to ensure that the A, uh, the A service and the B service in the new version can work well with the C in the old version. So it, can, it may have some downtime in, um, while upgrading. And uh, we come from the uh, user story uh, uh, product working group, and this is the eight requirement for performing rolling upgrade in an OpenStack project. The first one here, the online schema migration, for uh, which supporting the, the project can uh, migrate the, that, the, the, the data, and uh, we perform upgrading the schema of uh, OpenStack project. The second thing here is the maintaining mode that we fencing on the request from the user while uh, we upgrading the service. And the third one here is the line migration, and if we try to rolling upgrade the data plane, for example, the Nova Compute service, so we need to ensure that on the VM running in the node can live migrate to the other node. The fourth one here is the multi-version interop, uh, which I mentioned in the last slide that uh, on OpenStack service that communicate via RPC, you need to uh, 
uh, work well while recuperating from the, ex the old version to the new version. Uh, fifth one here, the grateful shutdown, is that if uh, one upgraded service uh, processing some user requests, we need to ensure that this must be need or this the, 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 user, the current user request to, uh, to, to go into the operating process. The sixth one here is the upgrade or chatization that we can uh, automate uh, we can automate the upgrade process via some tool like uh, Ansible or Heat. And the seventh thing here is the upgrade rating that we try to ensure on the new patch upload to, uh, to OpenStack source code can work well and do not break the upgrading process. The eighth one here is a project tagging which DC proposed for provide uh, if, the enough information for operator or end user to see how many projects in OpenStack that support rolling upgrade. And more detail in the upgrade access and stack, the DC of OpenStack define five upgrade related tasks. The first thing here is support upgrade. The second thing here is sub the second thing is support accessible upgrade. And there are some OpenStack projects, most, on most OpenStack projects that support upgrade, but there are no projects that, are, that can support the accessible upgrade because they are very hard to test the data plane of the OpenStack project. The third one here is support rolling upgrade. That, you know, there are a few OpenStack services like uh, Nuva or Neutron that now support the rolling upgrade. And the fourth and the fifth here is the zero downtime upgrade, which can ensure that while we're operating, there are no, no downtime, but uh, we can accept some a little bit of delay while in the user's respawn. And the fifth one is zero impact upgrade that eliminate on the, re on the delay from the user perspective. And I'll talk targeting the fourth one here that support the zero downtime upgrade, but not native in the open stack service. So from minimal downtime to zero downtime upgrade here, we need to enhance uh, two things. The first is the configuration management. Why we, why we release a new version of the OpenStack project, uh, we, we can have a new config. We, we can have the deprecated config or remove the config after the two uh, release. And we, we need to pin in, uh, in the config, in the config file uh, for the RPC communication. And the second thing here we need to enhance is DB migration, or uh, another term here, online schema migration. So while operating the database, we need to ensure that uh, on the process of that of database up, upgrades can, cannot break the work in, in the old service of OpenStack. Currently, there are two main approaches for online schema migration. The first thing here is the chicken bay that Keystone and Glenn uh, implemented. Uh, in the last cycle. And we also saw that Facebook used something like Trigger Bay in, uh, in, the in, in the reference link here for doing the operating of, of Facebook service. Uh, the second approach here is the Trigger Less uh, as the new Nova and Neutron are trying to target. And another approach here is disaster binary locks Bay that we will talk about later. <coughs> So uh, for the database online schema migration, so there are two candidate solutions. The first thing is we, we propose that we need to buffer on the request in the operating period. And the second thing is we utilize the checkpoint and snapshot of a binary uh, and binary log of database. This is our proposal that in the first step, there are the normal open stack, uh, full stack open stack cluster. And uh, in the first step, we try to operate the OpenStack cluster. We turn on the request buffer. This can be an in-memory request buffer. And this will hold on the user's request in, in this buffer and tell the user that please wait a few minutes while we're operating the OpenStack cluster. And after operating the, for our service from the X version to the X plus one version or, and the DB layer from X version to X plus one version, we release on the request in in the buffer and ensure that the request are resend with the original order. So there are two kinds of requests we need to buffering. The first thing is the RESTful HTTP, HTTP API request from the user and the between inter project. And the second thing we need to, to buffer here is the RPC request through the message queue layer. And we need to ensure also that uh, the, on the request that would that be put in the buffer need to be resend in the order in the correct order, then best with the timestamp. 
So this can be, this have an advantage that from the user point of view, there are no service perceivable downtime if the migration time is short enough. And, but it come out with the disadvantage that if we, if the migration time is long, uh, mainly for, mainly by the database migration pro process, the some requests can come out. And the system is last when the requests are queued in the buffer. And uh, for some requests can allow, so we, we see that there are some upright from the Keystone project that allow the expired token. If we, if it, if it allow, so we can reduce the expired token for uh, while resending from the buffer. So for trying to resolve the buffer can be very large, but by uh, while upgrading and migration data, uh, we come up with the next proposal. So uh, every open stack database had the had the feature called the binary lock. So uh, we turn on the binary lock and, and all the transaction will be a hole in the binary lock. And then we create the checkpoint, turn on the binary lock. So um, there are some there are some big here that uh, all the new data will come in the upper layer at, at the rest color, and on this new data will be recorded by binary log. And uh, we shut down on the database related service and read the binary log, and through the database log, we uh, migrate the data to the new version of, uh, of uh, DB. And after that, we turning off the binary log and come and restart on the, on the service in the new version. So there are a little bit of time here, and this can be eliminated with the previous approach. So the advantage of this proposal is that the internal system downtime is very smaller uh, comparing with the previous approach. And the uh, disadvantage here, uh, from user point of view, there is a short downtime, but the implementation is more complicated than previous approach. Uh, for example, uh, not own open stack service uh, using the same um, DB mechanism that can support the uh, binary log. So our our de live demo will come up with the first approach. So for conclusion, we we can combine the two candidate method to, to get advantage from the both method. So the first step here, we create the checkpoint and the binary log, and then we migrate the current DB to the new schema, to the new version schema. And then we turn on the buffer for holding on the user request. Then we migrate the new data to the new, new DB. And then we turn off the binary log. And we finish. So we hope that they can, act, uh, they can have a zero downtime from user point of view and only a bit lag while we while user sending some requests and have a response here. So here come the demonstration in Kola and my colleagues. We uh, have you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, first, I have some word about Cloud Project. It is in uh, Project in of OpenStack, and uh, the mission is uh, pro is provide the product ready container and deployment tools for op operating OpenStack cluster. And uh, I do not see any colleagues here, so thank, but thank you for bringing Cola to OpenStack. It's very nice, nice project and very nice team. Uh, currently, we have three deliverable. Uh, the first one is uh, is Cola. It uh, provides a Docker image for every OpenStack service. Currently, we have on serv on service in Button has image in Cola. The second one is Cola Ansible. It is the uh, Ansible playbook and uh, supplement tool for deploy OpenStack cluster. And the last one is Cola Kubernetes. It is mm, the same mission as Cola Ansible, but the deployment tool is uh, by Kubernetes and HAM. The Cola Ansible is in mature state, but uh, Cola Kubernetes is in active development. Uh, so we have uh, some uh, company use Cola Ansible in pro production. Uh, previously, Hill, uh, Mr. Hill tells us that we need to uh, enhancement for the zero downtime upgrade. And for the first one, is configuration management. And 
collapsible support configuration management by implement a mechanism called it configuration overridden. It is uh, use feature of Ansible and uh, some of uh, Python script. Call uh, Kubernetes post good potential to automate autom automate configuration management. You uh, config map and uh, as a resource and controller of Kubernetes and HAM. But it is an active development, so it's not um, have complete feature. And uh, for the online schema migration, for open stock service that support online schema migration natively, uh, we must implement the uh, mechanism in Kola uh, logic. And uh, I have blueprint here. You can see the, the red one. The online service upgrade procedure. But for the uh, the project would it not support uh, OSM natively? Uh, we can implement above idea at, uh, at a, uh, the high availability and load balancer layer. Uh, and for the request buffer, uh, in the demonst demonstration, we use the intermission and uh, in uh, OpenRST. Uh, maybe not many pe people heard uh, OpenRST or intermission. So OpenRST is uh, a web framework but it's a kind of extension of uh, an engine us and intermission is uh, a lure plugin for OpenRST for bu bu buffering the request. And it is an open source process. Uh, for the POC, we uh, have the uh, uh, in some component here. You can see uh, we put uh, intermission be uh, uh, in front of AI policy. From AI policy, uh, AI policy is part of Kola deployment model. And uh, the keystone is um, only a, a, a sample. In, Col in Kola deployment, AI policy is in front of own open stack service. And uh, the intermission here is for buffer and the request when the upgrade is not played. Uh, we also have uh, some tuning turn in here. The first one is header for the request, uh, go out the intermission. And the second one is I change part of some service in, up, uh, is in upgrade. Uh, I, um, we uh, also have one scenario here is uh, we continuously send uh, 200 requests. Uh, request for is uh, create and release network to uh, Okata, Okata cluster and we upgrade Neutron to the master cost by why the upgrade is sent on. Sorry. Okay. okay. And uh, for the demonstration, I, uh, we wrote some script, and you can uh, get it at the GitHub. Also, uh, we uh, record two video. Uh, okay. As uh, Mr. Hiếu said, the, the upgrade without time is um, a video. Wait. I hope so. You can see it well. Yeah. It's kind of short. Uh, let me publish. And uh, I, uh, we have four pan here. The first one is uh, the the first column. The first column is where we run script, and uh, the second column. In the right is uh, we tell the log, the output and the error log of the of the script was send the request. I resource this. Okay. I'm sorry, the phone size is is a bit small. Uh, you can see the when before the upgrade it the output is uh, in is is right out. And yeah, the up upgrade is 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 task. 
Okay. Sorry, because we cannot increase the true cluster deploying color for for not buffering and the buffering uh, version, so we we record the not buffering uh, versions and show it in the video. And in the next, we do try to live demo in the buffering version. So in the last, here is the error log from OpenStack cluster, and why we do operating the neutron from Newton uh, to the master version, we saw uh, currently is in there are no error. Can we can you skip to maybe the I will skip a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's it's still fine, but um, at the when yeah, you can see that I, I pre yeah. You can see that the neutron server is in upgrade, so uh, it's, it takes down for a while, and, and the request is sent to the neutron, it uh, has an uh, error here in the, in the right, bottom right panel. Many errors, yeah. Is that okay? So come back with the light room. Something wrong? Mm, sorry, the VPN connection is time out. I must VPN use, use VPN to connect to my cluster, and the connection is time out. So please open the video for the. So in the meantime, I will I will play the second video. And if the connection is bad, first I will provide some light for the move. Yeah, uh, the pan is the order as the same as as the previous video. I'm sorry for the connection is gone. In the demonstration, we only buffer the HTTP request. The message queue buffer run is in our resource. Okay, so. Uh, Kola community also posts many interests in runner upgrade and uh, zero data time up upgrade. But. Here is a test boot environment that uh, deployed by Kola, and we put a new layer <coughs> calling uh, OpenRSD with the intermission extension here. And uh, before operating the the Kola from uh, the OpenStack cluster deployed by Kola from the new turn to the master version, we turn on the buffering request and then start uh, upgrading the cluster and continually sending the the grid and delete network to the Neutron API server. So in the upper right here is a uh, response from the Neutron API server. And uh, the similarly with the previous scenario in the 
in the lower right here is an error log from the uh, neutron API server. So if there are uh, an error, they will show up here uh, mostly from the HTTP code of uh, 400, more than 400, and less than 500. Connection is back. Yes, connection is back, but yes, it posed somewhere. It seems that the Mux that does not like VPN. I, I don't know why. The team mark with CMD or standard like VPN. So, okay, please come up with a video. So, we cannot connect to our system via the VPN connection in a Summit network. No, something. So please come up with a video. Okay. okay. Yeah, you can see that the neutron server is the neutron server is uh, finished up upgrade. Uh, the phone is a bit small here, but uh, is here is. Um, in in the first in the top left pan, it is uh, the three yellow line, and it uh, it, it puts up the neutron server is uh, upgrade is finished up upgrade, and you can see that in the bottom right pan, there is no error is is speed up, but um, the output pan is is still fine, but it lags as uh, he said before. Due to the buffer, is uh, the request is held in the buffer, uh, and the f request is continuous sense. It's it's still sent. Okay. Can you skip to the last part for for the final reason? Sure. It's very long, very, very long process, progress here. So the upgrading of the Neutron server from yeah. old version to the new version is very long because we need to wait to, for the Neutron server in the new, newest version to come up and take uh, around five, ten minutes. Mm, and it is, uh, it is a case that our not Neutron server database has, uh, does not has many data in it, and it's at that, that, that time. And in the production, when the database is, has many, many da da data, the migration progress is much, long, much longer than it is. So if, if we do not have the buffer layer on, on the request, it's uh, fail. Skip, I, I skip a little bit here. The upgrade done progress is finished in the first pan, and the request is continue pro is continue process. You can see the output is uh, come back here, but no no error is shown. You skip to the. Okay. Yes. <coughs> so put is continue. So in the and in the first uh, top left panel, you can see that the operating process is finished, and the line uh, in the lower left panel is the request sending, uh, finish sending the request for creating and deleting the network, and after finishing the operating process, the buffer now release on the request that. Uh, uh, in the buffering, and here you cannot see the error from uh, any error from the request of the uh, AT neutron API server. Can you continue? Okay. 
Uh, you can see that the request on, on the request is sent, and the output is the uh, atom is is near the end of, of the output. We index the request that you can see here in the in the request that uh, creating and deleting the na the network number one, two, or and three, and then in the reasons in the top right panel we, uh, here is the. Uh, you can see the order of the of on the buffer request is continuously increasing from one to two hundred. So, yeah, that's it. Finish. Yes. Okay. So very okay. sorry for the VPN connection, but uh, come back in the slide. So we have the video demo here, and sorry is that we cannot la create a live demo because the uh, time of VPN mm. connection. But mm, you can try it by yourself. We provide the, the script we use in the demonstration. And e even the, boot, the set, set the VM for the, for the testing is put here. And I get the idea from the Cola Ansible project to set up a VM from for from the of 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 rest, you can in the our demo demonstration you want to for the for the host OS, and uh, you can use our our script to set up this for Cola deployment, and everything else is provided by Cola Ansible. So that's end our presentation. Do you have any questions? So if uh, there are no questions. OK, so thank you for coming here. And uh, very sorry for not, cannot have a, a live demo. So OK, thank you. Thank you very much.